courtyard of the Farnham Maltings, packed fit to bust with members of the churches in the area, the local jazz club, and visitors to the jazz festival, which just happens to be being held here this weekend. We've all come together, this motley assortment of us, in the sweltering heat, to join in with and sing along with the Real Ale and Thunder Band. I'm going to be talking to them a bit later on and finding out about the religious roots of jazz in the old Negro spirituals of the American Deep South. But to start with, let's get on with our very first hymn. It's that beautiful old favorite, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus, as I bet you've never heard it sung before. Now let's meet the band. On the back here at the drums is John Bell, who will also be playing clarinet for us a bit later on. Next to him on the double bass is Stuart Gledhill. In the front are the vocalists, Terry Keyworth, who also plays the guitar, Keith Howard on trombone, Tim Isles on the trumpet, and Chris Walker on the clarinet. And Chris, you're going to tell us a bit about what's coming up next, aren't you? That's right, Sally, yes. This is uh, probably one of the most popular hymns of this century. It was written in 1913 by a gentleman called George Bennard, who wrote this for a revivalist meeting in Michigan. And I'm sure when we start, you'll know exactly what it's called. <laughs>
Thunder Band was formed in 1977. I met them inside the Maltings with Peter Waddington, a church warden of St. Lawrence Doughton in Wiltshire. Peter, you actually have the, the claim of having discovered this lot. How did it happen? Well, I used to play in the Bull at Downton, and I used to go along on Thursday nights to listen to them. And I got to know them through that. I booked them for several dances in the village and concerts. and. I was chatting with Chris one day and we were talking about church music and I said, I think that church music drives more people away from the church than it brings in. And I suggested to Chris it might be good if we could have a jazz band in church. And, and Chris fell on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's a nice idea and in fact it's not original. It was done by, uh, uh, certainly by the George Lewis band in, in New Orleans uh, in the 50s. Um, I mean, we just really felt amongst, as far as the Real Island Thunder Band was concerned, that if we were going to do this in church, we would like to make sure we got the words right and do a bit of research. But the interesting thing is that when we play this sort of music in public, uh, in dances, a lot of the spirituals which we play get a very good reception and the, the, the crowd join in. We just thought if we can get that atmosphere and that attitude in the church, it would be wonderful. And Peter, what did you find the reaction was? Well, you must have been a bit nervous. We were very nervous the first evening. Um, the band were very nervous. Um, because it was the first time for a long time, they didn't have a pint of beer in their hand or a cigarette. <laughs> um, but we didn't know what kind of reaction we, we would get. But as soon as it started, it, it was absolutely fantastic because everybody joined in, everybody started clapping, and then it went down very well. So well, in fact, that um, we then did it in Salisbury Cathedral and then in Wimborne Minster. And we well, Songs of Praise. And, and now Songs of Praise, the, praise, yeah. the yeah. ultimate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think? Um, makes jazz such a good vehicle for expressing spiritual truths and, and depths? Well, there's a history of, of religion. I mean, the deep south of America is a very religious part of the world, and early jazz has got a very strong religious uh, background to it. And you'll find that um, of all the component parts of jazz, gospel music is, is one of the most important. And what interests me is that there's nothing trite about jazz because it actually was, was born in hardship. I mean, it's, it's tough music, Slavery, isn't it? Slavery, in fact, yes. Yeah, terrible uh, thing. But, of course, what happened was that the slaves uh, were converted by missionaries. Uh, they found religion, I think, in the New World rather than in Africa. And it was missionaries, really, that converted them to Christianity. And, of course, the combination of that uh, European hymns, if you like, with native uh, African rhythms becomes one of the pillar stones of the whole of jazz music. It's exciting and it's infectious and uh, we have found through playing different forms of music over the years that it has no aggression attached to it. In fact it um, positively emanates goodness and uh, makes people happy. So what are you going to play for us next here at the, the Maltings? Well this is a slightly different format than you've seen so far in that our very talented drummer Mr John Bell takes his clarinet and joins Chris and they're going to play Abide With Me.
Bob Blackman, you're the manager of the Farnham Mall things here. What does it feel like having songs of praise at a jazz festival? I think it's a great privilege. It's been great fun making the film, and uh, I hope it gives pleasure to those watching. It's been a great fun. Yes. Are we doing it well? Are we good jazz singers, you reckon? I think you're pretty good, yes. I think you'll make, make the grade, yes. yes. <laughs> Can I ask you, sir, what do you think of, of jazz for him singing? Love it. It's absolutely beautiful. It gives us such feeling. Really? Are you, are you a jazz fan anyway, or was this a bit of a surprise no, to you? Not really, no. No. What do you think it adds? Uh, everything. Depth, love, understanding. Now, this man was not planted, I assure you. <laughs> what about you? Oh, it's super. I really do enjoy jazz and with religious and Christian things. It's really great. You don't think there's something irreverent about it at all, as some people might well, suggest? Well, no, because the, the jazz came out of poor people who were really oppressed, and it was their religious expression, and it's really great to still hear it. It's really super. Do you think this is something that we should uh, introduce into our church? Do you think we should all be stomping in the aisles? <laughs> well, I think there is... I think it's marvellous. I'm really enjoying the day. Um, I think there is a time when we need to be quiet, but I think, too, um, I mean, it's really great as Christians we've got good news to proclaim, and I think through the jazz music, um, it just adds something. It adds a lift. I think it's really marvellous. OK, thanks very much. Let's turn to a song now that will really have us stomping in the aisles. It has its origin in the old Negro spirituals. It's a song about suffering and slavery and the hope of a sure welcome in heaven. Just a little while to stay here.
Annette Wellmans is a jazz singer, and she's the soloist in our next item. When we spoke, just outside the mall things by the River Way, I asked her about the song she's chosen. For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. For a long time I was singing um, songs that didn't mean anything to me, and they were, the words in them were quite, a lot of it was quite negative, a lot of it was quite dead. And now, since knowing Christ, I, it's important for me to feel right with the words that I'm singing because words are very important. They can either bring life or they can bring death, and I think it's, it's important for that reason. And it was a very dramatic change in your life. I mean, one minute you were a, a successful jazz singer, thousands of people in the audience, you know, singing with Sasha Distel in the Albert Hall, and the next minute you were a cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Why was that? Well, all the trimmings of the sort of music business, it really isn't all that it seems to be. And even though on the surface it looked as though everything was going okay for me, I was inside. I was quite unhappy and quite unfulfilled. And I remember a time when I saw a life and a, a bubbliness and a joy that came um, into my mother when she, when she asked Jesus to come into her life. And I thought, I want that. So that line here, for instance, when he said, come home to me, he set my poor heart free. It can sound a bit of a cliche when you read it like that, but that's meaningful to you. Very, because it's almost like a door opening and, and sunlight sort of flooding into your life. And it's like um, coming home. It's like having a sense of belonging for the first time in your life. And that security, which I'd never experienced before, and it's, it's really quite unique to an experience with God.